Welcome back everybody, I am your host Sonic the Hero Type and we're back for another How to RP1 short, more importantly the Advanced Biological Suborbital Experiment Contract, that's a mouthful, this is like my 30th take, I'm not even kidding, but anyways we're going to be covering this because you may unlock this contract before your orbital rocketry tech has finished researching or you need the money to help build your orbital rocket. I wanted to cover it either way, and the footage you're actually seeing right now is from the last episode, so let's actually get to it. Now, one of the main focuses I want to talk about is the speed part, the greater than 2,000 meters a second. You need to be doing that when you're above the required altitude, which in this case would be 140 kilometers above the surface, which is technically where space starts. So you need to be going over at the required speed when you're over that altitude or the contract won't actually complete properly. Another issue you're probably going to run into is the second and third contract require you to get 3,000 and 4,000 meters a second, and by the time you start getting to those higher numbers, recovering it from the suborbital launch becomes a little bit tricky, especially on that last one. So there's actually a way you can combine that with a later contract once you get orbital, but you can at least do the first one to get yourself some extra funding. But now that all the warnings are out of the way, we're gonna actually build the rocket. I'm gonna show you a really easy, basic way to do this that you can at least complete the first contract with. And if you'd like to modify the design and try to do the first two, feel free to do that. But we have the orbital stuff unlocked, so that's pretty much what we're gonna jump into after this rocket is complete. Complete. I did want to point out that this experiment that we're going to be using takes 24 hours to complete the whole thing, so don't expect to get a lot of science out of it. In fact, if you have any experiments that still need a little bit of farming done, I'd add them to this rocket. Let's go ahead and hop over to the VAB now. So I'm going to start off by editing my biological sample rocket that I used in the last few episodes because it has everything we need to do the first contract. We just got to switch out the smaller unit for the advanced biological unit. So we're going to go over here and we're going to buy it from the science tab, slap it onto our nose cone, and then we're going to change that little truss deal we used to put the other biological sample unit inside because this one's a bit taller and a bit wider, but it's not quite wide enough to keep the rocket profile at that 1.25. So so like before, we're going to use that truss unit to keep everything the 1.25 diameter and avoid using any weird clipping or having to uh, tool any fairings. So once we get this all put together, which I'm going to speed through this a little bit while I line everything up, and let's talk about how we're going to make this downrange. Now we're going to be using spin stability and tilting the rocket like before. You don't have to do it this way, but that controlled core will take a lot longer to build and you may have to retool some things. But since I'm doing this whole thing to get some extra funding for the orbital launch vehicle, we're going to go ahead and do it the cheap and easy way. Now that we have everything checked, we have our sounding payload, the advanced biological sample, everything's all ready to go. Let's fire up that sim and do a quick test launch to make sure everything is going to work before we build this thing and send it on its way. So we're going to zip through a lot of this launch, mostly because I want to get into the part where the contract actually completes so I can kind of explain a few things to you guys. As I said before, you have to be going the required speed as you get into space or the contract doesn't clear. So let's go ahead and get through the initial part of the launch and we're going to go ahead and slow it down once we get high enough into orbit to where you can see the contract completing which for this particular launch is going to be 140 kilometers above the surface so once we get up into that 140 range we're going to decouple and then right about here you're going to see this change and simply say return home safely that means you hit every one of the contract parameters so as you saw we were going over the 2000 meters a second after we hit the 140 kilometer mark and the same thing applies for the 3000 meters a second and 4000 meters a second variation of this contract so if you're not quite going the required speed as you hit the altitude it won't finalize and you'll notice that one if it doesn't say return home safely it means you didn't meet the parameters you need to make adjustments before you launch the rocket now down the road you get these return from orbital contracts or re-entry contracts which you get once you unlock like the heat shields and stuff and you can actually put a sounding payload and the advanced biological unit on those probes when you do the return and stack them with the milestone contracts to get extra funding. That's typically how I do it. You get more funding that way and you're not fighting forever trying to get that re-entry. Chances are you can do the first two of the contracts, but once you start getting into the 4,000 meters a second range, 
Reentry just becomes a little too spicy for you to survive. But if you want the challenge, feel free to try to do these contracts without using any heat shields, because it is possible, it's just kind of a nightmare to do. But with that, that is the end of the episode. We're going to recover this probe and call it a day. I just wanted to go over this mission real fast, because it is something you're going to encounter, and there are some stipulations to do it correctly. But when we come back next time, we will be getting into orbital rocketry, and a few other things I want to talk about as well. So, as always, I want to thank you guys again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed, or at least learned something. Thing, and I hope I see you guys on the next episode of How to RP1.